Hello and welcome to Etihad Stadium for day one of the 2013 NAB AFL Draft Combine. I'm Mark McGugan and this is AFL.com's draft expert Callum Toomey. We're going to be with you every day this week as the nation's best underage footballers converge to show their wares in front of the 18 AFL clubs in the hope of being drafted come November. Cal, it's a super important week. What do we expect to get out of it? Look, a little bit, because it's the last chance for clubs to really check out their draft prospects before the draft. There's seven weeks to go before the draft. They've been following them all year, many of them for two years. This is the final chance, the final chance to interview them before those leading days up to the draft. Of course, there's, for most of them, exam period coming up. So this is a really good last chance to see them last test, uh, interview them, see what they like, and to get that final impression if that pushes them into draft calculations for that club. And we've just come towards the end of day one of testing. What have they been through so far today? It was actually a pretty quiet day to start testing. This is the quietest of the four days of the testing. They were introduced to the group. They did some eye testing, OPSM eye test upstairs, and they'll do some uh, some jumping as well, standing in vertical leap jumps on the uh, on the turf out there. So that's the main part of today. Tomorrow there's some more testing, some repeat sprinting, and then the last two days on Thursday and Friday are the really big testing days with lots of running. We've got the opportunity this week to hear some from some of the future guns of the AFL. One of those spoke earlier today. This is South Australian James Aish. It's a good distraction, grand final week. I can come here and sort of let that take a day off of the week and keep my mind off it. But I'm pretty sort of set. My mind's fully on winning the Premiership Nord and then the rest will sort of look after itself. Yeah, I definitely think playing against men has helped me sort of mature myself and sort of develop as a player. So. I think it will hold me in good stead, especially the way we play and so the, the tactics and game plan we use. I think it all will help me come hopefully next year. And now we'll bring in two more young guns who are here this week for the Combine from the Geelong Falcons, Lewis Taylor, and from the Oakley Chargers, Jack Billings. And we might start with you, Lewis. Uh, you're not testing this week. You've got a bit of a foot injury. Can you tell us what the problem is? Um, yeah, so I had surgery on my uh, fifth metatarsal there about a month ago. Um, had that pinned and... Um, yeah, so it's just a long wait for recovery, about 10 weeks, so um, yeah, can't wait to get back. Was it something that you'd been carrying throughout the year and did you start to feel a little bit more pain as the weeks went on? Yeah, well, um, actually it was most painful uh, when, I went, when I went away on the trip for RS and then come back and um, yeah, had it sort of the whole year until the start of finals and went and had it looked at again and it showed a crack, so. When do you expect to be back running and out there? Yep, um, yeah, I should be back running in about six weeks, so i um, looking forward to that and I'll be back for the start of pre-season. So, so what, what will you actually be, be doing this week, I guess, talking to most of the clubs would be number one on the agenda? Um, yeah, look, hopefully we can have a chat to a few clubs and whatnot. Um, you know, I'll be able to you know, support the boys as much as I can, so um, yeah, see, see how we go. How are the excitement levels at the moment? Not long now until the draft. Does it get pretty nerve-wracking this time of year? Um, look, not at the moment. Um, not really thinking about it too much at all. It'll probably get a lot more nervous, sort of, you know, in that week. But you know, anything can happen. You just got to wait and see. So, um, just wait for them. Good man. Well, best of luck, and we'll head over to you, uh, Jack. You're in a similar boat to Lewis. Not doing a lot of the testing this week. Can you tell us what's going on with you? Yeah, well, um, yeah, I had a niggling knee injury um, all year and yeah, I had a uh, bursa um, sac removed about four weeks ago and um, yeah, so yeah, a bit of a clean out of scar tissue and whatnot that had been troubling me all year. So yeah, it's good to uh, finally get that fixed and yeah, but not um, testing this week. So what does that mean you do for the week? How do you spend your time? Do you meet a few clubs? Yeah, well, um, yeah, you don't do a whole lot. Um, but yeah, obviously you get the opportunity to speak to a few clubs and yeah, go from there. How's your year been? Obviously you've managed that injury throughout it. Uh, when did you feel like you hit your best form? Yeah, well, um, yeah, it was pretty annoying managing it throughout the year. Um, but yeah, I think I was able to get in pretty good condition by um, you know, middle of the year and for Vic Metro, so which was pretty pleasing after a yeah, frustrating year. Has it been managing expectations as well? You had a really good year last year and have managed to do the same at times throughout this season. How's it been being talked about as a really high pick for most of the season? Yeah, I guess um, it's something you can't really control. So, yeah, just tried to block it out and I guess at the end of the day, just focus on your footy and, um, yeah, playing. As, uh, as Cal said, you have been talked about as a pretty high pick, particularly by him. He seems to love you a fair bit. Uh, 
Uh, do you worry not doing the testing this week that that's going to harm you at all, or you think the clubs pretty much know what they're getting out of you by now anyway? Um, yeah, I guess you worry a bit because you know, you're not out there. But um, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to do a lot of the testing through the AS program, so yeah, um, they've got some data on me. So yeah. Well, good on you, boys. Thanks uh, very much for joining us, and uh, all the best as the next few weeks unfold. No worries. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, of course, uh, the men that all of these players here this week are looking to impress are the AFL recruiters, and we caught up with one of those earlier today, Western Bulldogs list manager, Jason McCartney. Another real good opportunity to interview players. Obviously, we've done a lot of interviews already, but it's re-interview and interview some we haven't. But obviously, the opportunities are also for the players to get out their skills component, but the physical testing... Um, we've seen in years gone by, it's a real opportunity for players to elevate their position in the draft. Yeah, when you're early in the draft, it's uh, yeah, best available talent. I'll obviously pick four. Um, you'd love to be picking a lot higher because that means you're playing finals and uh, potentially win a premiership, but we've got pick four. Um, we know there's a, a really good bunch of players around that first five or six, and that's not to uh, undersell the value of that next sort of band of players too. So we're happy that we're in that, uh, we've got that pick, but obviously the ability to find players through the latter stages of the draft is what makes a really good recruiting team and builds a successful club. So Jason McCartney, understandably not giving a whole lot away there. The Dogs do have pick four. Cal, who do you think they'll be looking at with it? Well, I think they'd really love a tall forward, obviously, given the way their list is developing. But there's probably only one at that top end of the draft, and it's Tom Boyd, and I can't see him getting a pick four. I think what they'd like second most is a really skillful, clean, classy midfielder. There's a couple up for grabs there, Josh Kelly and James Ash. I think if one of them get through to pick four, they'll end up a bulldog. Can you see any way at all that they could trade up to pick one? Look, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think the Giants would be letting go off pick one, particularly in light of the Buddy Franklin decision to move to the Swans. I think the GWS will be holding pick one and taking the best player available, and that's Boyd. OK, and just finally, before we let you go, Cal, a look ahead to tomorrow. We've got the sprint testing. Uh, it's a big day for the clubs to have a look at who's got the burning pace. Who are you, who are you expecting to, uh, to light it up? I'd say that Nathan Freeman, a Victorian guy, midfielder with a huge speed burst ability. He's, that's, his, that's his game. He gets the ball at clearances and he runs away from and bolts from. I think he'll test really well in the 20 metre sprint. I'd be surprised if he wasn't in the top three or four. Unfortunately our earlier guest, Louis Taylor, won't be out there. He's the one other one from the top end of the draft with some pure speed. So unfortunately he won't be out there but I think it's Nathan Freeman's test to, to take home. Well that's a wrap for day one. Thank you Cal and thank you for watching. Make sure you come back to afl.com.au tomorrow for our day two update when we'll have all the results of those sprint tests.